Good morning and welcome to the Isles of Scilly. My name is Caroline and I'm here for a week traveling with my other half Andy who right now is behind the camera. Today we've come on the most gorgeous boat ride through what felt like an absolute English tropical paradise to visit the island of Briar. This morning we're going to be doing a wildlife walking tour with one of the local guides called Will Wagstaff and then I think this afternoon we'll probably have a little bit of chill time on some of the gorgeous white sand beaches. I remember talking to a visiting geologist years ago and he said, so, do you know there's actually gold in the Salonian granite? So my group got very interested in that until he pointed out that there's actually got more gold in a pound of seawater than a pound of granite. Oh wow. So Will's explained that this is a really common weed, but it did come over from Asia and it's pretty much on every single continent except for Antarctica. When you smell the buds at the top, it smells like pineapple and it really does. It's so strong. And you can see that one's already got warmed up. It's closed up again. So basically they open up to when they need to warm up and then they close down. But you can see it's angled towards the sun. Everything that you can see growing up on the hill behind me is there because the birds have dropped seeds and then the plantation has just naturally started growing. Similar to what we experienced on St. Martin, this island seems to be dappled with lots of very small fields. They're not used anymore to grow daffodils, but it's what they originally were used for. This particular one's got these tree etchiums at the very back, which have come over from the Canary Islands. And Will was explaining that they only flower once every two years. He said, if you're lucky, maybe once a year. Sometimes though, once every three. A couple of times a year now, Tresco do what they call their Tresco event, whereas they're waiting over there as the tide's going out, they've got tractor and trailer, and then they have a whole paraphernalia of bar and everything else, and so they've got big banners going up, and the whole lot is out there, and you can go for your beer and your burgers, your Prosecco and oysters, and all sorts of things. The silly fish lot up here get involved, and so they've got their ship out there doing food, and you know sometimes they've had people doing music. It's really weird, because they can only be there for an hour and a half, two hours, and then it all has to go away because six hours later from the low there's basically six meters of water over the top of that so yeah. it's quite a sort of uh, an event to say the least it's very busy as a result i sometimes do walks across september time you know start on tresco look around the pools walk over here and spend the afternoon on here it's a different way of doing two islands in one got to know your tides and you've got to know where you're going but it's not too difficult when it's on the the big tides So there's two painted ladies catching the sun. So these are coming up ostensibly from North Africa. There's also a red admiral on the top there as well, the one with the black and white wing tips. You can see the painted ladies reacting to each other. And there's at least three on the top. But just this morning, there's been an arrival of those. Walking down to the quay, I saw half a dozen. Um, so they've just come in overnight. That wind's just right for them arriving. As you can see, so, I mean, some of these big butterflies, they reckon they can do something like 60 miles in a day. They're phenomenal migrants. That's over open ocean, just keeping going. And they'll get sort of, you know, just up into the top end of Scandinavia, maybe at furthest, and then they'll start heading back. And a lot of these are gonna overwinter as caterpillars pupa in as far down as North Africa. And then basically they're moving, as Europe warms up, they start moving north. So they reckon it's the 16 degree isotherm, the you know, sort of temperature line, and uh, they're following that north. But the ones that leave North Africa won't necessarily be these ones now, because as they go, they lay eggs and they then hatch and grow. And so, yeah, it's a slow old process. So the ones we're seeing now might be ones that have come from say, Southern Spain or somewhere like that. I don't really know. I don't think anyone does exactly. But yeah, red valerian, such a good insect plant. So yeah, this is chamomile, mm. as in your posh chamomile lawns. Loads of bird's foot trefoil. That's this orangey plant all the way through here, yeah. which has a seed pod shaped like a bird's foot. But I like this one because you gathered I like names of things. And wherever you come from in the UK, this will have a different name. So bread and cheese, tom thumb, eggs and bacon, lady slipper, fisherman's basket, socks and shoes, and the list goes on and on and on. But I do have a favourite one, mainly because it's horrible, really, I think. 
But a couple of parts of the UK, apparently they call this curling yellow thing Granny's toenails. Mm. So which one are you going to remember? Mm. <laughs> yeah, not nice, is it? It's not kind. We've just been told that this field here was growing potatoes last year. They've decided not to grow them again this year, but because the soil got turned over, it means that all of these marigolds have just popped up. And right now it's just a swathe of gorgeous color. The tour that we did with Will was fantastic. We took a tour on the island of Samson a couple of days prior to today with a historian and archeologist called Catherine. And the two tours were very different. What Catherine had to talk about was just a few very in-depth things, uh, a couple of different sites within the island. And I suppose that was very much dictated by what was actually left behind in the sense of ruins and things like burial chambers. Whereas with Will, he was constantly just like, stop, starting, stop, starting. And there was also parts where he would just kind of walk and talk at the same time. And he was just this treasure trove of knowledge. For him, it was very much a case of, oh, we've just seen this bird. We've just seen this shrew. We've just seen these butterflies. And yes, I get that the flora is perhaps a little bit more to be expected. The, the unknown of which animals were gonna come along, but he just seemed to know so much about everything that we were coming across. It was wonderful. The way in which he offers his tours is that you can do a morning for £10 per adult or if you would like to you can stay on after lunch and you can pay another £10 to do an afternoon session. His knowledge bank was so wonderful and also I think just having that personal guide taking you around the island so you weren't really needing to think about where you were going was excellent and had we had more time perhaps if we were here in the Sillies for a fortnight instead of a week I would have loved to have continued on with him this afternoon but it's just that case of wanting to also just have like a little bit of downtime, chill time coming along to a gorgeous beach where we've come and had lunch and I think to be honest it's such a gorgeous day today we might even get to go for a dip here because unlike yesterday's beach which was a little bit of a disappointment because of how bouldery and seaweedy it was where the sand met the water here there is areas where the sand goes right down into the waters and they look to be so crystal clear and turquoise and it really does feel like this beach is not in England it does feel like we're in this tropical paradise not too dissimilar to where we turned up this morning when the boat dropped us off I think the conclusions on the May slash June water temperatures is that it's absolutely fine to go wading up It's to freezing about... cold. <laughs> no, it's absolutely fine to go wading up till about your waist, but I think that if you're wanting to do any serious swimming, a wetsuit would very much be needed. I think these waters as well at this time of the year though, because a lot of people are using them, especially families with young children playing lots of things in the water, any sign of life such as fish or shellfish or anything like that long gone. But it was quite interesting getting to see the plant life and because of how clear the waters are, like with the current, you can see it swaying and moving and it's like really mesmerizing. And there are like other things as well, which I don't think was seaweed. I think there might've been some other kind of creatures growing on the seaweed. I should have some footage of that. So if you know what they are, I'd love it if you could leave in the comment section below sharing with me and anyone else who might be curious. Probably can't stay in there for too long. So I think we'll go back up onto our very shaded from the wind bit of June and just to try and warm up in this cape which I actually got last summer ready for when we went and did coasteering last summer in Cornwall because I realized that where we were needing to meet and get changed there wasn't really anywhere to get changed and then it came in really handy again when we went to the Lake District and I went swimming in Derwent water which interestingly even though the Lake District is much further north in the UK that lake was so much warmer than these seas but I think it's just because that was August going into September whereas right now it's May going into June but we'll, we'll, we'll head up onto our sand dune and 
warm up and dry out. I have to confess, much of the afternoon was just spent chilling out on that beach on Briar. But from what I can gather, I think Briar does have some of the nicer of the beaches out of all of the islands on the Isles of Scilly. So I suppose it really wasn't the worst of places to end the holiday by having that lazy afternoon. It is one of the islands as well where there's a section of it where we can send up the drone due to the heliport on Tresco and then the airport and heliport on St Mary's. A lot of these islands have restrictions on where drones can be flown. I was having heaps of fun just flying it around. I was able to get shots of Tresco and it's gorgeous beaches on the southern end of it. There was also the gorgeous beach over on Samson the waters with the rocks and then the seaweed and then the fact that you could see through to the sand at the bottom where it was just sandy because of how gorgeously clear the waters were. And then some kayakers came on through which just made it even more spectacular. And then disaster almost struck. It was saying warning low battery return to base so it was pretty much as soon as that flashed up and I tried to return it to base the picture on the phone then just froze and there was like an alarm going off so of course panic was setting in because I was way out over the water. We could just see where the drone was but we were struggling a little bit. In the end I just passed it over to Andy who just very calmly stopped the alarm <laughs> and then was able to bring it back the rest of the way. We are now needing to prioritise in order of, of importance, needing to make it back to the ferry on time. We've got about 30 minutes. Going to the toilet <laughs> and then if we've got time picking up some ice cream so we'll just see how we get on. So as you can see, we've managed to make it back for the boat. We also managed to make it for the toilets, but I'm afraid the third priority, ice cream, it was a goner, we would have missed the boat. The last boat home,